Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. We continue reading from Imam al Ghazali's Jawahir al-Quran, the Jews of the Quran. We have reached chapter 16 on Yasin. Why the Surah of Yasin is the heart of the uh, Quran. We're using Muhammad Abul Qasim's translation. And this is page 81. So why the Surah of Yasin is the heart of the Qur'an? Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yasin, qalb al-Qur'an. Well, first uh, of all, of course, that uh, the uh, this hadith has a weak chain of narrators. I think it's very important. It's uh, our responsibility to cl- clarify these things. Um, not only this hadith uh, has a weak chain of narrators, there are many uh, traditions about Surah Yasin. Uh, some of them are simply uh, famous uh, phrases that are not even uh, traditions. For example, Yasin Lima Qura'atla, it means that. Uh, uh, Yasin is uh, the Surah Yasin is uh, is good is valid for whatever it is recited for. So uh, if somebody is sick, somebody whatever. Lima Quraatla. This is a famous uh, saying that is not hadith at all. Uh, probably uh, more since people do recite uh, Surah Yasin. Uh, over their deceased um, loved ones, usually. Um, this is not a hadith, it's simply uh, not a valid uh, tradition as a tradition. Uh, and the meaning of the hadith, anyhow, it's about those who are dying, not about those who are or the dead, but does make much difference, really. Still, it's really the, uh, it is uh, part of the Quran. Another hadith, من قرأ يسين في ليلة أصبح مغفور الله. Also, لا يصح, he who recites Yasin in one night, he will, uh, he will reach the morning uh, being forgiven his uh, sins um, a tradition that is obviously yeah uh, ali iqra yasin a lengthy uh, tradition oh ali is addressing ali bin abi talib recite yasin and then there's a long list of things that uh, yasin will cure this is uh, a forged uh, tradition altogether and some scholars even uh, said that da yasah fi fadl surat yasin hadith as that uh, there are no really sound traditions about the merits of surat yasin nevertheless we uh, read what imam al-ghazali is uh, is saying because it could be the insight about the surah uh, could highlight certain uh, meanings so as I said perhaps you know perhaps you now long to know the meaning of the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Surah of Yasin is the heart of the Quran. Uh, I consider it proper to entrust it to your understanding in order that you may discover it for yourself. On the analogy of that of which I have just made you aware in similar statements, similar traditions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it may be that you will know by yourself the reason for the Surah of Yasin being the heart of the Quran. Energy and awakening on your account is greater than the joy achieved by awakening caused by others.
to be energized to be uh, by the surah like it's uh, experiential and and we do uh, get influenced uh, by what we uh, read it could be enlightening uh, our hearts could be enlightening our faces it could be really uh, motivating us uh, energizing us but this is something that if you experience this uh, on your own it's uh, better than seeing it uh, reflected in others awareness by one's own effort increases energy more than awakening by others i hope that when you become aware of the secret of the Quran by yourself, your motive will be prepared for it. And your energy will hasten to the continuance of reflection, coveting, investigation, and knowledge of more secrets. It is by this reflection that there will be open to you the real meanings of those Quranic verses which are striking and which we shall soon gather for you in order that consideration of them and thereby discovering of the secrets may be easy for you. The secrets, really the mysteries, the hidden, like there are, of course, uh, layers of, uh, uh, of meaning. Chapter 17, why the verse of the throne is regarded the chief of Quranic verses, why the surah of opening is the best of all surah, لما خصص النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم آية الكرسي بنسيت الآية القرآن والفاتحة بأنها الأفضل. Perhaps you will ask me, Imam Ghazali says, why is the verse of the throne distinguished as the chief of Quranic verses and the surah of opening? Because we have a hadith صحيح about um, the uh, verse of the throne, آية الكرسي, and we have hadith صحيح about uh, Al-Fatiha. So perhaps you will ask me, why is the verse of the throne distinguished as the chief of Quranic verses and the surah of opening as the best of the Quranic verses? Is there any secret in this? Or is it just by chance, as in praising a person, the tongue passes to one expression and in praising a similar person, it passes to another? كما يسبق اللسان في الثناء على شخص إلى لفظ وفي الثناء على مثله إلى لفظ آخر. So that's the hypothetical question, which is the style of Imam Ghazali. So I say this is a response. The truth is far from this letter alternative. For this befits me, you and him who all speak from passion and not him, meaning the Prophet وسلم, who speaks from revelation. لا بمن ينطق عن وحي يوحى. Do not. Therefore, imagine that a single sentence proceeded, proceeded from the Prophet ﷺ in his differences such as anger and pleasure, except it is being right and true. The secret of this specification of the verse of the throne and the surah of opening is that that which unites many kinds of excellence is called excellent. So that that which unites even more kinds is named the most excellent. For excellence is excess, and the most excellence is the greatest excess. The uh, the word excess does it really reflect as ziyada? I think there are certain negative connotations of the word uh, excess, but uh, additional merit. This is the uh, one meaning here, because it's about uh, being, uh, it's about al-fadl, it's about that which is afdal, because excellence might uh, allude to ihsan, and that there is something addition, additional, because we, in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, uh, the hadith in which basically asked the Prophet alayhi salam, he showed up, anthropomorphic of course form he approached the Prophet وسلم, uh, spotless uh, white clothing uh, the uh, companions did not recognize him 
uh, uh, so he was not really from Medina and it, it, it did not appear that he was traveling so this is like there's something unique about him so because either you are you have been traveling uh, then we talk about uh, uh, dirt sweat you know uh, spots all over your uh, clothing etc or you are from the people of medina and you, you when you are neither this, this is something uh, mysterious so the, he uh, approached the prophet sallallahu until he um literally uh, he was very very close physically to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, he asked questions one about islam then the next one is about iman the third when when he reached ihsan obviously you talk about something that is above uh, Islam and uh, Iman and ta'abud Allah ka'anaka taraf and lam takun taraf and nuhu yaraak then so uh, and al-husn you talk about a certain uh, uh, aspect of uh, of beauty jamal is one Allah jameen uhibu al-jamal and excellence doing things to um, a beautiful degree a perfection if you will we we'll continue as to the headship it means the stability of the meaning of nobility su'dad which necessitates following by others but itself refuses to follow any other when you review the meanings we have already mentioned in the two surahs you will know that uh, the surah of opening comprises remarks on many and different meanings and since hence it is the most excellent and that the verse of the throne comprises the greatest knowledge which is the one followed and intended by all other forms of knowledge and so the name of headship befits best here then be mindful of this kind of freedom in dealing with the striking verses of the Quran and of what it what will follow this in order that your knowledge may be abundant and your mind opened in which case you will see wonders and signs and be delighted in the paradise of different kinds of gnosis this is the paradise the bounds of which are limitless because knowledge of God's glory and works subhanahu wa ta'ala has no bounds but the paradise you know consists of bodies and is therefore limited although its bounds are wide since the creation of body without limit is impossible take care not to accept the lowest in exchange for the best in which case you will be among the fools although you will be among the people of paradise the prophet sallallahu said most of the people of paradise are fools and the illiyun are indeed the possessors of intelligence we spoke about this before but uh, since people might uh, uh, listen to one um, session and not the other uh, this is this hadith the second part the illiyun uh, are indeed the possessors of intelligence it has no origin in the uh, books of hadith the first part uh, most of the paradise are fools this is uh, the chain of narrators it's not fihi lean it's not the strongest obviously chapter 18 the con the condition of the gnostics know that if the yearning to encounter god and if such a desire for knowing his glory which is truer and stronger than your desire for eating and sexual intercourse had been created in you then you'd have preferred the paradise of different kind of gnosis 
So the paradise of different kinds of gnosis, its watery meadows and its gardens to the paradise in which the sensuous desires will be satisfied. Again, know that if the yearning to, count, to encounter God, and if such a desire of foreknowing His glory, God's glory, which is truer and stronger than your desire for eating and sexual intercourse had been created in you, then you would have preferred the paradise of different kind of gnosis. Okay. Rather than translating it as the, diff the paradise of different kind of gnosis, it's watery meadows. No, it should be. Then you then you would have preferred the paradise of different kinds of no gnosis to that which has watery meadows and gardens, the paradise in which the sensuous desires will be satisfied. Okay. The paradise of different kinds of gnosis over the to the paradise. This is correct. This is correct. But once uh, one should not be uh, misled by the watery meadows and its gardens because you talk about gnosis ma'arif and this is here uh, a metaphor uh, just as if you talk about the circles of learning circles of dhikr this is really the uh, this is really uh, uh, the meadows that uh, we talk about and it's a metaphor it's a feast it's a metaphor it's a banquet it's a metaphor no further that this desire is created in the Gnostics and not in you as desire as desire for worldly influence. Ja. Is created in young men and not in children who have only desire for play and their being without the pleasure of domination. Ariasa. Whereas the Gnostic is surprised at you. for your addiction to the pleasure of worldly influence and domination because the world on all sides is a mere play to him. Imam al-Ghazali elsewhere, he says that the last thing that dies in, the, um, in men in particular, so the uh, Someone might be old and sick, meaning that uh, uh, he no more has uh, the ability to enjoy uh, sensual uh, pleasures and uh, sick to the degree that uh, he is he's prohibited and he adheres to the doctor's prohibition, like they would prohibit him from eating this and that, like a very, very strict uh, diet. Sometimes they describe it here as uh, hospital food, bland, you know, tasteless. The Nima Uzai says the, the last lust to die is that of Hubri uh, Asa. So people could reach. Uh, and we, we can see it that uh, people reach uh, old age and also no ability. Maybe they are uh, showing signs of uh, dementia, uh, early signs of Alzheimer. And they are still in their uh, 80s, they are running for. Uh, uh, the uh, um, office of the president's time and again and we talk about a nation of a uh, few hundred million people definitely there would be someone uh, who is capable even within your own party younger love of domination it's the last thing that dies when this desire is created in the agnostics their delight in knowledge is in proportion to the measure of their desire. This desire has no relationship to the pleasure of satisfaction of sensuous desires. For the former is a pleasure which does not pass away, that of knowledge. 
and which is not to change by weariness, whereas the latter does. On the contrary, that pleasure, unlike all other pleasures, is always multiplying, continuing and increasing, with increase in knowledge and yearning for it. That desire, moreover, is only created in man after maturity, I mean after reaching the limit of the full man, maturing in that intellectual, um, spiritual sense. The man in whom this desire is not created is either like a boy whose natural disposition is not perfected to receive this desire, or like an, in, an impotent person whose original natural disposition is corrupted by the troubles of the world and its desires. When the Gnostics are provided with the desire of Gnosis and the pleasure of beholding God's, God's glory, they in their study of the beauty of the lordly excellence are in paradise or in a paradise, the breadth of which is as the heavens and the earth. That is a lofty paradise, the clusters of fruits of which are near together, for its fruits and uh, are the qualities of the Gnostics themselves and are unfailing and unforbidden. Since there is no weariness in Gnosis. Now, uh, the Gnostics look at those addicted to the base desires, just as intelligent men look at, the, at children at the time of their addiction to the pleasure of play. And you might say to the kids, stop playing. This is why you find them to have a disliking for people and to prefer life and retirement and solitude which are the best love things to them they flee away from all the influence and wealth because these divert them from the pleasure of conversation with god they shun wife and child avoiding being diverted by these from god subhanahu wa ta'ala Also, Imam Ghazali might be reflecting his, uh, projecting, reflecting his own experience because he did leave a uh, wife and child. He had three daughters. Um, Abu Hamid is uh, simply an uh, honorific uh, nickname. I say honorific because it's uh, many Shafi'i scholars ad adopted the Abu Hamid. Uh, as a uh, nickname or were nicknamed Abu Hamid Abu Hamid al-Ghazali Abu, Abu Hamid al they say in the case of anyone of these Gnostics whom they see he is a man to whom wicked things are suggested by Satan rather he is a fugitive in whom the beginnings of insanity have appeared فَيَقُولُ فِي حَقِّ مَنْ يَرَوْنَهُ مِنْهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ وَسْوَسْ بَلْ well, they, the Gnostics, would laugh at people. The Gnostics, for their part, laugh at them for their contentment in the goods of this world and say, if you mock at us, we will mock at you. In Of course, which part is afflicted with humiliating punishment? The Gnostics are preoccupied with the preparation of the ship of salvation, Safinat al Najah, for others and for themselves, because they know the danger of the life to come. So they laugh, they laugh at the heedless, just as an intelligent man laughs at children when they are occupied with play and when a victorious sovereign has drawn near to the city, intending to make a raid. To make a raid so that he may kill some people and clothe others with robes of honor. 
O poor man occupied with your great worldly influence, which embitters life and with little wealth, which causes disorder. You arouse astonishment when you are content with these, neglecting to look at the beauty of the lordly excellence and its glory, and its glory despite its luminosity and appearance, for it is so apparent that it need not be sought, and so obvious that it does not require reflection. After the purification of the soul from the base desires of the world, nothing bars the soul from occupation with that beauty except its strong luminosity together with the weakness in the pupils of the eye glory be to him who has disappeared from the sight of men's eyes by his dazzling light and become veiled from them by his great appearance subhan man ikhtafa an basail khalq binurihi wa ihtajaba anhum li shiddat dhuhurihi I would uh, just simply to reflect the position and I will conclude with uh, with um, one example. Sheikh Abu Fatah Abu Ghadda, Rahimahullah, a contemporary Muslim scholar uh, of the uh, Hanafi uh, school, one of the greatest, this is what I gather uh, about Rahimahullah. He wrote a booklet uh, about the Muslim scholars who remained uh, single, did not get married uh, for whatever uh, reason. But in one case, which really uh, I was uh, definitely reminded by uh, those Gnostics who uh, did not tend to... uh, the base lusts uh, and desires. One of those scholars on uh, his wedding night, now this is not uh, something to be, uh, this is not uh, advanced as a, an ideal at all. This is simply an example because the son of the Prophet was simply to get married. Uh, we cannot emphasize this uh, enough, and we might have a chance to to speak about issue, this issue, uh, whether a marriage is uh, an obligation, uh, or because it really t- it is relative to the to the person. But the son of the Prophet uh, is to get married and to procreate and. Uh, So that scholar on the wedding, on on his uh, wedding night, the uh, bride was already in his house. And uh, he did nothing other than uh, looking at her and looking at his books. And he realized that uh, if he continues with this, if he uh, if she continues to uh, uh, to live with him, then she will take him away from his books, from uh, knowledge, at least partially. At that moment, he uh, divorced her because she would not be in his presence without marrying her in the first place. Now, the probably 99.9% of, of, of us who are aware of this story, and then you, the listener, we might not really uh, appreciate this story, and we might not really, we might dismiss it and uh, go ahead and dismiss it. The idea is that some pe- for some people, knowledge is... Uh, uh, so dear, so fulfilling, so uh, tasty, if you will, that they cannot really, uh, and they would not uh, exchange uh, seeking knowledge uh, with anything else. 
as long as yeah, you don't, you know, not getting married will not cause you to uh, to have uh, fitna. You will not uh, go into haram. It will not. create a, a void uh, and preoccupation with the with the idea thus we conclude uh, chapter 18 and uh, chapter 19 inshallah the reason for uh, stringing the jewels and the pairs of the quran on two separate strings في سر السبب الداعي لنظم جواهر القرآن في سلك واحد ونظم الدرر في سلك آخر ذات البي شابتر 19 in the next session إن شاء الله until then سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله أنت أستغفرك وتبليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته